All right, so you're considering whether buying a gaming desktop or a gaming laptop. You don't know which one to get, and you've come to this video for someone else's opinion to hopefully shed light on yours, make you feel better about the purchase you're about to make, or make you make up your mind whether it's a desktop or a laptop. You got them right there, you're staring at both of them, and you just need some extra information that you can't find online. So let's get right into this video we are going to start with laptops some pros and cons and we'll move to desktops so first off the first pro uh, for a laptop or a gaming laptop is the fact that it's super convenient you can bring it with you it's portable ish we'll talk about that and it's something you just bring over to your friend's house play a game and just have some fun you know you don't have to worry about lugging around a big box and having your monitors with you and your keyboards and your mouse and all that stuff and worrying about setting it up looking for extra plugins on the wall you gotta get out that power strip it's something you can bring with you and play you possibly could even do this in school and impress all your friends a next pro to a laptop is the fact that not only is it more cutting edge it's kind of a cool thing to have you know not a lot of people have a gaming laptop but it's something that is kind of like a staple uh you can say oh man i got that alienware i have that msi or if you're fortunate enough to have a razor blade you can pull that thing out and people will be envious whether they're console players or pc players they look at that and be like you can play games on that and all you gotta say is yes. So let's move on to some cons. And unfortunately, the cons outweigh the pros when it comes to gaming laptops. So first off, we're gonna talk about form factor. They're thick, and not the good kind of thick. They're super heavy, and it's pretty much like carrying around a brick with you everywhere you go. And I know some of you guys are like, yeah, but the Razer is just as thin as the new MacBook Pro, and it's a gaming laptop. Yes. And no, the Razer Blade thermal throttles. And what that means is whenever you're gaming on that thing and you're putting you're putting the screen to use basically and all your cores and your hard drive and your video card, thing heats up and it starts slowing down. And it's not one of those things that you're going to play AAA titles on, whether it be Black Ops 3 for some custom zombie maps or like GTA. So... The fact that it's so thin keeps it really, really warm inside, and that's not a good thing. So bigger PCs or bigger gaming laptops is a good thing in some ways because, one, they can fit way more technology underneath the hood. And the next thing is that it doesn't heat up quite as much. The air can get in there and it can get out, cool all your parts down, and keep it nice, but not as much as a uh, an actual tower or a gaming desktop so another con and this was the big one this is the one that i really want you guys to think about if you're really considering buying a gaming laptop and it's that the battery life is not good whenever you hear laptop it makes you think of your mom's dell and you're like hey i could be playing she's always on that thing and it never dies but no in fact gaming on a gaming laptop lasts for all of 15 to 30 minutes and you're done that's it the battery dies it completely shuts off which is not a good thing and then you're stuck there having to plug it into the wall and be tethered to a wall the exact thing a laptop is not supposed to be and gaming like that the next thing is the screen size the screen sizes are not that good because one if it's gonna be a gaming laptop I'd like to see anything over 15 inches but it looks like people are going for that 13 14 pushing 15 kind of screen real estate and I don't like that and most people are like oh I hook it up to an external monitor anyway I just use that on the go or whatever but if you're gonna hook it up to a monitor have a mouse and keyboard why not have a desktop and actually get really good performance for your money and next up we're gonna be talking about the desktops for the last section of this video uh, we're gonna be talking about pros and cons again hopefully by the end of this video you can make up your mind so pros with a desktop is you can unlimited amount of times just unlimited updates or upgrades rather you can if you need more ram 
you stick some more RAM in there. If you need another graphics card, you hook another graphics card in there. You either yank the one you got out if it doesn't support SLI or Crossfire, and you put the new one in. And if that one supports SLI or Crossfire, you put another one in, and you bridge it, and you have the power of two graphics cards to one monitor or two or three or however many monitors you have when you're playing games. So you can always upgrade, even if you spend a small amount at the beginning. As long as you put your money into decent parts that you can work on and work up from, you can always upgrade. So that's why I always say put a little bit more money into your CPU and motherboard uh, to make sure that you have proper expandability and also with your power supply. That's one. That's three things you really need to put your money into whenever you're building a budget build PC unless you're going to be happy with that and you know that you're going to upgrade the complete thing in uh, a few years. So that's something to look forward to in a desktop. The next kind of pro for a desktop is that you're getting actual performance. So as with a notebook, you're getting the M versions or the mobile version. You're getting a mobile graphics card. You're getting a mobile processor. And not all are like that. I do give that. I'll, I'll take that. But the majority out there are like that. You're getting the mobile GTX 980 or 960, 970, and it nowhere near stands up to what the performance is of that of the desktop version. And now let's move into the cons of having a desktop. And the number one thing is there is absolutely no portability. Uh, right now, if someone's like, hey, bring your setup over uh, to my house, set it up, and we'll do some videos or something, it would probably take me three or more hours to tear down my entire setup and get it into my car and then get going and setting it all back up over there or somewhere else would probably take that much of time too because I don't only take well I guess I'll leave that out so let's just say about two and a half hours that would probably be my setup time and that's just with two monitors and a, uh, a, a desktop and it's not even the fact that it's like oh you just unplug it and throw it in it's all my um, cables are neatly organized, so you gotta you gotta deal with that too. You're not just gonna slap them back, and that's a con. I can't really think of too many more cons for a desktop. I guess uh, size. You don't want something bulky in your room, and you have to buy a monitor, you have to buy a keyboard, mouse, that all factors into the price. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys can make up your mind from this. I know I rambled a little bit, but I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video.